How many songs have you written since coming to New York City? Three? Four? When you got here, you gave us singing and writing. So don't act as you're doing all of us a favor. Welcome, guys, to another edition of Scriptly Adapted's Artist Roundtable. We are back. I'm Kyode. I'm Kate Howard. Guys, listen, we we've been we've been gone too long. We we come back to you with another show, another edition of the Artist Roundtable, and we have a very special special guest with us, actor Bobby Potts. Woo! Welcome, Bobby. Welcome, Bobby. Welcome, Bobby. Welcome, Bobby. Uh, listen, man, how you been, man? How, how's everything? First off, I've been great. First of all, let me just say, I think what you guys do is so dope. I mean, married couple doing the same work. Oh man, it's a blessing. But I've been good, man. I've been I've been blessed um, to be able to you know still be working. Uh, what's going on? Um, you know, doing self tapes, doing you know other work, other projects. Um, you know, being a dad. Nice. Uh, the whole, the whole nine. So the whole, happened. the whole shebang, man. The whole shebang. The whole shebang. We're, we're gonna get into all of it. Listen, man. I, I wanted to ask you, but let's get right into it. I wanted to ask you, um, as an actor, uh, yeah. what? How did you get your start? In, in, and and what were your like key influences? Like, what made Bobby want to become an actor? What? Why did you wake up one day and was like, you know what? I kind of want to do this. Mm -hmm. So, um, my father was a one of the pioneer break dancers and he danced for this uh uh this group called the new york city breakers Please. and and uh they uh they were they were break dancers and they danced around the whole world they were on uh i mean every, every country they were they were in uh soul train when that was out so my dad was was uh, uh, a very talented you know uh dancer uh break dancer specifically and um his manager, uh, Michael Holman, uh, who was uh, supposed to be coined, he, he coined the word hip hop, actually. If you look him up, Michael Holman. Really? Um, yeah. Um, but he was the manager. And uh, as I was growing up watching my dad perform and everything like that, uh, Michael Holman did some uh, com commercials uh, for Nickelodeon. Oh, that's And cool. I was oh. able to uh, do like about two projects with Nickelodeon uh and uh I was about seven years old yeah um and so doing that so young it was like I loved it it was cool because going to school you know my friends would you know like oh I saw you on, on Nickelodeon oh, that's, awesome. that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> That's awesome. Listen, Nickelodeon was where it was at. Yeah, okay. man. <laughs> I loved that channel. So no, I stayed on Nickelodeon. I did too. I love Nickelodeon. And seeing my dad on TV, uh, he was uh, on a show or on a movie called uh, Beach Street. It was a very Beach famous. Street. I know Beach, yes. I mean, and um, seeing him like on TV was like, wow, and I wanted to do it. Five to six years ago, I, I decided to like follow my passion that I've always had. Um, and it's 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 been been quite the ride. What are the, some things that you tie into what to get into the zone? Like, because I noticed one thing that you're really really good at is facial acting. You have a great face when you act. Thank um, you. You wear all your emotions on your sleeve. You kind of inhabit that character. And I know mm -hmm. a great example of a facial actress, and we pull jokes at on her all the time, but it's Elizabeth Moss. Yeah. We always <laughs> say how much of a great facial actor she is, which I think is very very hard. Definitely. Not. Um, especially if as a person, you know, in the norm in normal circumstances, you are not emotional or you know, whatever. But what are some things that you channel or tie into to get you into the zone? How do you do that? I tie into emotions and I think I I lose myself. I try to I, I put it this way, I try to be 80% the character and 10% the actor. Okay. Um, if that makes any sense, okay. right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I think starting out, I was more 10%, I mean, 80% the actor and 10% the character. I get what um, you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so I would just literally just like being 80% the, the, the character, the, the best way I can explain it is, is like being a kid and playing with your toys and getting into character when you're playing with your toys that's like the best way I can explain it. Okay. I, I totally that's get cool. that now. Getting back to that kid, because when you're not that kid and you're the adult, 
everything gets in the way and right. it's hard for you to really you know lose yourself without thinking what this person thinking what, what, what did i do it right doing that whatever when you're a kid you don't care right. that's true right. like it is what it is i'm i'm batman i'm cinderella i'm whatever it is like you know yeah um so i think i i for me i just kind of like lose myself being the the child and i whatever emotion that character brings i just try to invoke that I also think i have to pay credit to the work that i've done on myself mm. self-work um meditation yeah. even esoteric stuff like i mean whatever works whatever gets you to break down the layers yeah of, of, of you know identification and mm -hmm. labels um you're able to achieve so much that's um, true so i have to give credit to the, the work that anyone can do what's been your most challenging role to really dig into and really embody the character to the point where you will live in it. To be completely honest, I don't, I don't, I don't, I have never experienced diving into a character where I completely lose myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to invoke whatever, like, like when it comes down to emotions, like no one is alone. We've all experienced anger. We all experienced sadness. We all experienced all these emotions we all have. Um, I just portray that, right? Like whatever my face looks like, that's what it is. Like, I'm not right. doing anything special, like contorting my face in a certain way. That's just what it is. That's what I look like. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> right. uh, but as far as, uh, like emotions, I just, I just, I, I do feel it. Some <laughs> of the best actors are the ones who lose themselves yeah. in yeah. that role to the point where it's, it's like, Whoa, well, okay, let, like me Meryl step, Street. let me step back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she's just, she's a chameleon. She folds yeah. every role she does. She's yeah. fantastic. Is there a role that, that's been creatively fun where you, you had an awesome time? Like it was one of these roles that you've always wanted to play and it was like really fun to get into. To be honest with you, every single role that I've done yeah. has been, has its own unique experience. Oh yeah. Um, I, uh, two summers ago, um, I did a play and I, I'm not really into, like, my thing is TV film, mm -hmm. but I, I actually did a play and I, I was lead in it. And this role, this character was very, um, stubborn yet philosophical, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and emotional. Um, that was actually fun. Yeah, that sounds fun. Like, that sounds it was actually where I, I got to get to the point to tears. Mm. Uh, and all the roles that I get, I they're they're not, you know, sentimental roles. You know, they're they're tough guys and right. like, you know. So playing that role was actually like, oh, this is great to cry mm. in front of a crowd, like and just put my emotions out on stage and just leave it there was pretty, pretty brilliant. Um for myself. Cool. The experience is amazing. Yeah. So in one of your clips as Boris, who was quite funny. Do you, do you really speak three languages? That's impressive. No. Oh, because <laughs> uh, you I barely oh, speak beautifully. Be you with you. Barely speak English. <laughs> That's why I chose acting because the words are written. I just got to read them. Chris has also mastered several languages, including Spanish. Hola, mi nombre es Boris. French. Un chante, je m'appelle Boris. And Russian. Vivier, mania, zovut. So tell us about your experience working on the set of Power. Um, obviously, we're huge fans, because but it's a big show. I mean, that's a big role to land. And yeah. I, we were watching it, and all of a sudden, Kaylee's like, wait a second. Yo, I, and it's like, I've had that moment too. And it's like, oh. and then you're like, oh, and you're like fat, rewinding. You're like, I know that person. And you like rewatch it like three times. But yeah, I had, to, I had to definitely rewind. Yeah. I was like, wait a second. I know that dude. Much I much know time. that dude. Tommy was the one who uh, made sure that my face was on camera uh, oh. during that scene. Um, he's kind of like made sure like, look, can we get this angle? Because we have to get Bobby's face and blah, blah, blah. Like it was, it was really cool to um, have his support and... Um, his words of wisdom that he shared with me. Let's um, Very nice. Uh, so yeah, I, it's it's been all love for me. Um, how do you, how do you balance? Because I, I 
I think we talked about a, a while ago, even before I even asked you to be on the show, the balance, right, of family, work, and and passion. Mm -hmm. How have you found that to have you found a, a way to successfully do all three, or have you have you had to give up one for the other? What what's your what's your formula, man? And I think Oprah has said it one time where you 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 can have it all, you just can't have it all at one time. Mm. Right? Very true. Yeah. So I I just I just will away for my schedule to balance out family time, mm -hmm. to balance out acting, my other works, other projects. Um it where there's a will, there's a way. Do you have any current projects you're working on? Any future projects that you can talk about? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so um, right now, um, there's a new project called Philly. Uh, it's going to be on omiprotv.com. Uh, it's a web series. And it's kind of like a, a romantic comedy. I love those. Uh, but it also has, uh, you know, deeper topics. Okay. Um, okay. And uh, it's, it's um, the character, Willie. Uh, is uh, definitely um, interesting. <laughs> I'll say. I like um, it. The fact uh, that you hesitated that much, he must. Yeah, yeah. Be, he's got to be a <laughs> dynamic character, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bobby, listen. We 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 on scriptly adapted on this roundtable. We always like to ask this last question of our of our guests. Um, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. But you only you can only give one answer. One answer. Just one. That is it. All right. Did we say one, one answer? One answer okay. and an exp of course an explanation of why. Okay. But one answer, right, Bobby? It's a hard one. So I even had to write it down. That's how <laughs> that's how hard it is. So Bobby, the last question of the night. Uh, give me give us yeah. your favorite film of all time and why. It's the best worst question of all time. <laughs> my favorite film of all time. Yes, man. Favorite oh film of all time. God. Do you need a moment? I do. Um, we're, we're gonna play some uh, some Jeopardy music as you as you. <laughs> wait. We're gonna edit. We're gonna edit that. In. <laughs> it's because it's like through your childhood and what's going on now. No. Like, different phases. It, it, oh. Yeah. Oh. There's gotta be one film that stands out though. It's gotta be one. The Matrix. Mm, the okay. Matrix. All three or just the first one? Just number one. All just right. number one. I like it. Why, why, why'd you pick The Matrix? You, you were going through your Rolodex of movies, I could feel. Yeah, it. for sure. <laughs> so, and then, you, and then you came to The Matrix. Why, why The Matrix? Hmm, M. I, I feel, I feel for me, it's more of a documentary than an actual movie. Uh, <laughs> That's right. I'm really, I'm really big on, on mindset. I'm really big on manifesting things into your life. Um, and um, I think that movie kind of like hits it on the nail for me. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. We appreciate you coming on the yeah, show. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you for telling us your inspirations, your works, uh, your artistry. We appreciate you as an artist. Uh, keep doing your thing. We're rooting for you. Thank um, you so much. And I, I hope to see you in another something else, man. Where I, I, I don't know some type of superhero. Where, I don't know. Yeah. I need. To, I need. To, oh, I need great. you. I need you to invite me on the set and be like, "Yo, I got my. I need. <laughs> I need one of those invites one day." I hear you. I hear you brother. <laughs> it's only fair. Listen, I'm. I'm. I'm willing to manifest that as well. Let's do Listen. it. Guys, check this episode of Scriptly Adapted Artist Roundtable on all our social media platforms and our website, scriptlyadapted.com. Take care, guys. Later, guys. Bye. For me, it was an incredible experience. It was um, kind of like dreams coming true. Mm -hmm. uh, always wanting to be you know, on television, uh, working with you know such a dynamic character and actor. Um, the experience was 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 humbling. Back. Mm -hmm. It was definitely humbling, um, and uh, I'm just looking to do more.